Hi everyone, it's Paula here. I'm here at my office and wanted to jump back in and tell you a little bit about how to do the calming cat. So again, these are just some examples and ideas. It's important to involve your child in the process. So um, so take some ideas from what I'm doing today. Basically, it's like we want to give them uh, some kind of calming tool or skill and it needs to be connected to an object because uh, kids are very, um, they are still very concrete. So in order for them to really remember that tool, they need to have something tangible in order to remind them how to use it um, when they are in that dysregulated state. So here we go. Let me see if I can Flip the camera. Yes, I can. So there's just one example. This is a super tiny portable one where you could put just a couple of things there and that can go in the backpack of a child. So that's one example. The other one is I just have like a first aid bag. Um, it could be like, you know, it's kind of like emotional first aid. So I'll show you what I have in here. It has kind of like two sides. So here's all kinds of interesting things. Um, we have essential oils. So kids actually love that. Um, you can even help them pick the ones that they love. Show them how to use it, which is um, just putting three drops or three rolls. Like this is the one that has the roller top. Uh, put it on the palm of your hand, rub it together and then take a deep breath. So um, there's that one. That's a really great for calming. The other one you can do is, um, this is just kind of like a toothpick. So uh, this, is, this is called a pocket pal. So you write some, uh, you decorate it and you write some positive statement on it. And you know what? If it's a rough day, you can even tell your child like, you know what? Maybe you want to have your pocket pal with you today, wherever you go. So that's just kind of like a reminder for them to, you know, to, mind says, trust yourself. But it can be really anything, some kind of encouraging statement for the child. Let's see. What else do I have? Oh, I love these. These are for older children. They can write a tweet for themselves, like this one say, you can figure this out. So tweet is more like a works with the cognitive part of the mind. So some kind of positive thought, positive statement for um, that the child writes for him or herself. And uh, you can encourage them to do that. Like, oh gosh, you're having a really rough time. Maybe you need to write yourself a tweet. Um, and then I also have little hearts. So this can be, I encourage kids, they really love this actually, to write them a heart message. So it can be, so this, this comes from the mind. This one comes from the heart. So some kind of like heart message, like you are loved, remember you're a good person or whatever it is. And you can order these, um, I think both of these from Amazon. So those are really good ones as well. What else? There's so many interesting things. Oh, look at this. I have a tiny little flashlight. <laughs> it actually works. So this is a reminder for kids, kind of like what lights you up, what makes you happy, what gives you passion. And, you know, especially if they're like, oh, I'm bored. I don't have anything to do. I don't know. So, you know, let's go get you a flashlight. You know, what, what are you really interested in? Kind of connects with what Danelle and I were talking about yesterday, like following the passions of the child. Sometimes we get to um, kind of work with the child and figure out what are their passions. So you can have this as a reminder. Again, it helps the pull their brain into this uh, different kind of mode, uh, thinking about positive things, what their passions are. Um, might be really good even with teenagers, you know, the teenagers who just want to lock themselves in the room. So there is that. Then we have, I have a little tree here. And this tree is a, is really a reminder that, you know what, uh, these emotional storms and uh, upset moments are kind of like, you know, kind of like the wind or kind of like the storm. And you can talk about how the 
how the wind blows the branches of the tree and they are swaying this way and that way. But the wind doesn't last forever and the storm doesn't last forever. So it's important to keep that in mind. Um, so this is a really good one. Again, they can touch this, touch this and they can really connect. Okay, it's not going to last forever. It's not going to last forever. And it kind of feels actually really good to touch that. What else do I have? Uh, ooh, I have a tiny little megaphone. This is a, a symbol for, hey, I have a voice. Remember, we've been talking a lot about, um, you know, children feeling important, children feel powerful. So this is a good reminder, like, you know what? They can express themselves. So it might be a, a good idea to get something. It doesn't have to be exactly like this, but something that symbolizes this to really remind themselves like, hey, they have a voice. It's okay to express themselves to mom or dad or whoever it is. So that's that. Um, let's see what else. Oh, and these are really cute. They can be like an art project. These are just um, clear their class so so you can um probably find these on amazon or something like that so it's a you know fun little craft project to write a positive statement there like this one says it's going to be okay this one just says you like hey you you there you are important and kids can make several of them with different kind of messages so again when there's an upset moment they can look at their um their little stones that they've made and connect with the message and even hold it again. It's a very like nice sensorial experience. Hmm. Let's see what else. I'm going to take this one next. So this is a spinner. Uh, let me see. I'll spin it over here. So this is a good reminder to put a positive spin on it. So if your child is being really like negative Nelly, and maybe they are even, you know, we talked, I talked earlier today about getting stuck in the rigid left side of the brain. So that, that could be just like, you know, they, everything's bad. Nobody loves me. Uh, everything is just going wrong. So remind them, you know, take your spinner out. Let's put a positive spin on it. So the idea is for the duration of the spinning, they get to say, and you can even take turns about um, what positive things are going on in their lives or how can they even uh, put the situation that they are having into, you know, turn it into something positive. Let's see what else. These are amazing. It's love that. It's a little stone. I call them worry stones. Oftentimes, if kids are having a really hard time, um, this is something that uh, can really ground them. Again, encouraging them to touch it, to feel it. What's the temperature like? You know, can you describe that to me? How does it feel? Things like that. And then, of course, there's a balloon here. I've talked a lot about balloons and how helpful they are in terms of regulation. So lots of games you can play with balloons. There's a couple of the games in, my, in the YouTube, in the Family Fun Zone. Uh, but yeah, definitely have balloons, have different colors there um, that can be super grounding. Just even if it's just a simple clay game, like let's try to keep the balloon up in the air. And then, okay, then we have a cell phone here. <laughs> Again, reminding kids like, okay, maybe there's somebody you can talk to. Who could you talk to that could help you in this situation? You want to call grandma, grandpa. You can, you know, you, it doesn't like have to, it doesn't mean that you, you know, need to call somebody. There could be somebody in the household as well. This particular cell phone is also, it is uh, soap bubbles there. So, um, you don't have to have both the, the same, but you can buy like very tiny little uh, soap bubbles here because that can also be super helpful in terms of uh, shifting and changing the mood and um, just breathing, like breathing exercise, you know, getting kids to breathe through uh, blowing soap bubbles, especially anxious kids in the morning time before school. That's usually what I would um, ask the parents to do with the children. 
So that's a good reminder to that, like, hey, there's somebody you can call. And then what else do I have? I have this cute little silly monkey here. There he is. Look at how silly it is. So this one is just a reminder, like, okay, hey, let's just have fun. Let's let's be and act like a silly monkey. And um, that's just, again, uh, a symbolic uh, symbolic representation for the kids to remember to do that. So that's what that's for. And then I have these dice. I have a lot of them. You don't really need that many, but at least two. You can play a game. It's called I Have a Heart. So um, you you play this with the child and have like a tiny, I, I know I've talked about like no rewards, but you could have like a tiny box of things that are rewarding. And um, that could be um, like more like a relationship stuff. Like you get a hug, you get a kiss on the forehead. You can tell mommy to do a silly dance or something like that. So have a box full of that kind of stuff. And then you play this game. And anytime they uh, get double, they get to choose from the box of rewards. Other if it's another number other than doubles, then they get to say, I have heart because, and you take turn. I have heart because I was practicing uh, riding the bicycle and I f fell down so many times and I kept going. I have heart because I um, uh, really like uh, defended my friend when somebody was being mean at them. So you get them talk about like themselves in a positive way. That's the whole idea of this game. I have heart. Okay. So uh, lots of different kinds of things like that can be in the um, calming kit. Also for older children, they can have a little journal like a gratitude journal, for example, just a tiny little, you know, something like that where they can write stuff. And then there is another kind of art project they can do like this hand. Um, you can again buy these from Amazon or find them in the arts and crafts store. So this is um, who's in my tribe. <coughs> so writing names here. And they should actually write the actual names of the people that when they are feeling upset, lonely or whatever is going on, that they can actually look like, look at all these people who love me. So this is all the people who love them. And then finally, um, what you can have is just kind of like some, these are smelly stickers. So you can kind of encourage the child to take it and like, you know, really, you know, encourage them to smell it, which is just basically like taking, um, helping them take deep breaths. Okay. So that's a really simple, uh, this is a portable. You can have also, um, the same items in a more like a box form, which is what I have. This is my, what I called, called fidget box. So I have all kinds of interesting things there. Um, things to squeeze like this. And then there's another kind of sensation, kind of spiky. This gives a child like, you know, if they need more sensorial experience, um, there are things to kind of build things from. Of course, Play-Doh, these little Play-Dohs are really helpful and could be even in the, uh, uh, the, the one that you can transport in that smaller bag. Here is the sensorial brush. You can just Google sensorial brush and you just brush your hands, your arms, you know, kind of whatever. Um, there is also a game. Yeah, I'm not really good at it. It's hard to <laughs> play. But anyways, could be like a fun little game like that. So anyways, uh, all kinds of different things that you could have in your um, calming kit for the child. Let's see what else. I'll show you my calm corner. <coughs> and then, okay, it's time for me to go. Um, here are my emotions. So that's the body outline I mentioned. Just a simple body outline. 
and they color their feelings wherever they are feeling it in the body. I also have a feelings abacus that looks like that. So let's say um, here I say feelings and I have like a little um, little box of different kinds of feelings. There's peaceful. So they can go here. It's Velcro and they can exchange whatever feeling they want to express. So then the way it works is, can you show me your feelings? And then they show like, oh, I feel really peaceful. This one is worried. Oh, I'm, I'm a little bit worried. I'm quite a bit worried, actually. There's this virus going on, so I'm worried. This one is confident. And then they show how confident they feel and so forth. And when you do this, you don't really have to ask why or what's going on. Just have them show it to you. That's all. That's already helpful. And then if they want, they can also um, color those feelings in this uh, body outline. And there's my calm corner. Okay, so super cozy. Have your child um, uh, kind of design it the way they want. There's the stuffed animals, different kinds. That's Sophie. There's Medi Teddy, Maxi the Husky. And then, of course, some books there. You know, some really good calming books. There's Yoga Whale. It's really good for young children um, about yoga and how to do yoga. There's Good Morning Yoga. There is um, Bubble Riding, Relaxation Story. So different kinds of books you can have in the calm corner as well. Okay, so hopefully that's um, hopefully that gets you started. There's lots of different ideas for this calming kit. The only thing that I don't have here yet in my calming kit would be some uh, physical exercise. So you could even, <coughs> you know what would be really good? If you could take pictures of your child doing jumping jacks or talk to your child like, you know, what, what are some really fun kind of movements that you like? And then you take pictures of them, you print it out, you laminate and put it in your calming kit. So they can remember like, okay, yes, when I'm upset, these are the movements, these are the fun things that I can actually do to help myself feel better. Okay, that's all I have right now. I got to jump back into a session. I will talk to you guys later. <laughs> Bye now.